All right, everybody, we've got a brand new integration with a product called IAP Hub. And IAP Hub makes it really easy to set up in-app purchases for your apps. And what is an in-app purchase? Well, an in-app purchase is simply a digital purchase that the user makes uh, that lets them access some sort of uh, feature or even your app just in general uh, or maybe like download tickets or buy credits or um, access a season pass to something. Uh, these are all examples of in-app purchases uh, th that you can set up. So their components uh, make it really easy to do this. And uh, I've just got our first class uh, kind of template app um, set up here for mobile apps. If you go up here to the, the big plus sign and go down to the marketplace, in the marketplace you can search for IAP and you can see that we've got uh, Adalo's IAP kit here, um, but that we've also got IAP Hub um, in, uh, components here as well. And once you install this, uh, you'll notice that in your components list here, you'll have actually six new components here um, that you can use to create uh, paywalls and let people make purchases um, inside your apps. And uh, just a quick explanation, we've got uh, Start, a pre-built paywall so you can think of this like a templated paywall which is uh, what we're going to be setting up today but then if you want something that's more custom uh, you want to customize the flow you don't want to use this pre-built paywall they offer all of the things that the that this paywall includes as individual components as well so uh, you can have a buy button a restore purchases button uh, you can have a manage subscription where they can upgrade downgrade and cancel and uh, if you're selling just a consumable, uh, you can sell, uh, you, you know, you can display the, the product price. Or I'm sorry, that, that's actually for, for subscriptions and, and all in-app purchases as well. But this is just the product price, uh, kind of like you see here on the, on the paywall. So I'm just going to quickly set this up uh, in this app and show you how to do that. Let's just say that I want to uh, keep people from accessing any part of the app before... Uh, you know, I, I want to keep them from accessing any part of the app until they pay, right? So what I can do here is I'm actually going to set up a paywall in between when the user signs up or logs in and the home screen, all right? So the way that this is going to work is we're going to add a, uh, we're going to add a screen here and we're going to call this the IAP hub. Oops. Yeah, let's go to, let's just uh, do a blank screen, I think. And this screen, let's just go ahead and call this IAP hub start. Uh, but obviously you can call this whatever you want. And I'm just going to kind of zoom out and we'll drag this brand new screen that I made over here somewhere. All right. And what this screen is going to do is I'm actually going to set this screen as the home screen uh, because whenever a user logs in, I want to check to see if they have an active subscription, right? Uh, I, and what I'm going to do to... To, to make sure that that happens is I'm actually going to use the IAP hub start component. And this is just a, a loading spinner here. Um, and it's, we're going to put in some, some details here, uh, in just a minute. Uh, if you don't want to see the loading spinner at all, you just, you don't want the user to see this. You can always go into style here and just change the activity color to transparent and that activity spinner will be hidden there as well, all right? So to get started with this, uh, you'll notice that I have to put in my IAP Hub app ID and my client API key. Um, and to do this, I can go to iaphub.com and create an account there. And I've already got an app created. Uh, we're not gonna go super deep into the details here on, on this type of stuff uh, because it, it's uh, quite extensive on Google side and, and Apple side, uh, but once you go to IAP Hub's dashboard, you can create products, uh, monthly memberships. You see I've got some renewable subscriptions here with different prices. Uh, I've got, uh, I can create uh, or I can track users that have used my, my app. I can track the, re the receipts that they've been sent and control the listings of those products. All right. Uh, but from my dashboard, uh, you can see that I've got an app here called First Class. And if I go down to settings here, you can see that I've got my app name. Here's my app ID that I'm going to plug into uh, my component here. 
And I've also got underneath API keys, I've got a client API key that I'm going to copy and paste into the start component here. And because I want to check uh, whether or not the user has a subscription, I'm just going to make sure that this box is checked. And my, my app does have an authentication system, right? I've got a sign up and a login. So I'm going to also check this. And you'll see now it's asking for something called logged in user ID. And this is the uh, IAP hub uh, ID. This is the, the ID that IAP hub is going to use to identify this user, right? So I need to go into my database here. And under my users collection, I'm just going to add a text property here. And it needs to be called exactly this. So I'm going to call it IAP Hub capital I D. All right. I'll go ahead and save that. And then on that start component, I'm going to set the logged in user to be the logged in user IAP Hub ID. All right. Um, underneath actions here, I've got three different options. Uh, I can trigger when IEP Hub starts successfully. And this is essentially, you know, as... Uh, if this particular component can reach out to IEP Hub and has access to it, then I want to execute these actions. Uh, if it can't reach IEP Hub and access our subscriptions and our users and things like that, then maybe I want to send like an error message or something. Um, and then I've also got another optional one here so that if someone was active before but now they're inactive, I can also control what happens after that. All right. So for this one, I'm just going to go to update user. So because what I want to do is this component is going to reach out to IEP Hub with the user's ID that we just made. It's going to check to see if they have an active subscription. And then this component actually returns a, uh, a property to uh, a true false property, letting us know whether or not they have an active subscription. But I need a place to store that. So I'm going to go over here to the database and I'm going to add another true false property here. And we're going to call this has active subscription. Make sure it's spelled correctly and everything, and, and it, it is case sensitive, all right? So uh, then once uh, once I have that created, I'm going to go into actions here, and you'll notice that in, I, in this property that I just made, if I go down to IEP hub start to, which is this component that I uh, put in here, uh, I have an option here to select whatever it is that this component is returning. So if it's returning you know, false, they do not have an active subscription, it's going to say false in this property. If it returns true, yes, they do have an active subs subscription, it's going to save true in this property. All right. And then what I can do is I can control the user flow based on uh, what that uh, what was returned, basically. So I'm going to go to link to uh, and then I'm going to use this classes screen as my home screen I'm going to link to this classes but I only want to do this sometimes if the we can go down to logged in users has active subscription is true right and then I'm, I can even add another uh, action here to link to a new screen and maybe we call this one the paywall right or IEP hub Paywall. All right, and put it way over here for me. Let's grab this and bring it a little bit closer here. So maybe I want to, I want this component to link me to the paywall screen only if they do not have an active subscription. So only if more the logged in users has active subscription is false, right? Uh, because if they don't have a subscription, then I want to send them to the paywall so that they can get a subscription, right? Okay, so let's make sure that our uh, that when, when a user signs up or logs in, that they're actually sent to this screen first, this home screen. Because right now it's just sending them straight to the classes screen. Um, and I always, uh, you know, I think personally best practice is to just go ahead and develop your app the way that you want it and then add in these kind of, uh, workflows and redirections uh, as needed throughout your app to control, you know, who has access to what. So uh, underneath this create profile, this is where they're supposed to be, you know, linked to drop down class types or whatever. Maybe I don't want them to be able to do that yet. Maybe I just want them to be able to, uh, you know, be sent straight to the IAP hub start screen after they sign up. And same thing for login. 
Uh, and the reason that it's the same thing for login is because every time they do this, I want to check to make sure they have a subscription. Um, and this may be different for your app. You may not want to, you know, check to even get them into the app. Maybe you're like paywalling a certain feature, right? Maybe it's not on the login screen. Maybe it's actually on like they try to add an additional task or they try to uh, invite an extra user that you don't want them to be able to invite. You can kind of paywall all of that stuff off now. All right. So in this case, whether they sign up or they log in, they're going to be sent to the to the start screen. The IAP Hub start component is going to reach out to IAP Hub and say, hey, this user, do they have a subscription? Do they not? It's going to update the user based on what's returned. And if they do have a subscription, it's going to send them to the, to the home screen, this classes screen here. And if they don't have a subscription, we want to send them to the paywall screen. And this is where we're going to actually put in our uh, IAP Hub paywall. And again, you can build this out of individual components if you like. Uh, they've got, again, you know, individual components over here. So just the same way you see I've got a price, you know, I've got a continue button, a buy button. Uh, if the user had a subscription here, uh, we, can do, we can do a test here, show active subscription. This is what it would look like if, they, if the user actually had an active subscription. Uh, you can, you know, make this uh, out of individual components if you want by using those other four IAP Hub components in there. Right, so you can kind of build your own custom-looking paywall. Uh, but I think the, the pre-built paywall is pretty good, so we're just going to go with that for now. Um, and the products that you see here are just for testing. These don't actually exist yet. Um, and you can actually kind of you know, control what this looks like uh, just as like a testing, uh, just, just for pre previewing in the editor. Um, so I'm, I'm just going to offer kind of two products here. And really, there's not a whole lot to set up here. I can change a language code. Uh, I can turn on the different alerts, you know, like uh, uh, it'll send them like a little notif like a little pop up on their their phone that says, hey, you know, we successfully restored your purchase or we failed to restore your purchase or whatever. Um, and then under actions here, I can uh, actually say, you know, OK, what happens when the purchase is successful? Well, when the purchase is successful, of course, I want to update the logged in user to say that they do have an active subscription, right? Um, and uh, so that's one thing that you could do. Another thing that you could do is you could just link them straight back to the start screen and have the start component check to make sure that, yes, their subscription was, in fact, successful. Um, but I think update user is fine. You've also got some other optional things here. You know, when restore is successful, so if they restore it, then, of course, I want to do this kind of the same thing. I want to update and say, yes, they do have an active subscription. Um, if it's empty or if it failed, you can, you know, redirect them to another screen. These are kind of optional workflows that you can use to control what happens if the purchase is successful, what happens if it fails, all those sorts of things. You can kind of control the user flow through your app with all of these different sorts of actions. And again, you've got tons and tons of styling options here. I don't want to use blue. Maybe I want to use our, our green color here. Uh, you, can, you can totally do that, all right? And you can, uh, of course, add you know, text above this and, and all that sort of stuff as well, all right? So that's kind of how you would set up the paywall. Uh, the last thing here is just kind of this error handling uh, underneath the actions for if it failed. Um, I typically recommend to actually link to like a modal screen. So I'm just going to choose a modal here and kind of convention, uh, you know, the, the, the best practice here is to say, you know, uh, if it wasn't able to reach IAP Hub, we want to have like a message that's displayed to the user, something like, uh, you know, network error, error, please, oops, please try again, right? Something like that. And uh, we want to have this, this OK button just kind of link back to the, to the IAP Hub uh, kind of uh, start screen here. So if it can't reach out to IAP Hub and get what it needs, uh, it's going to display that error to the user. They can click OK, and then it'll kind of retry. Um, or, of course, you can build your own kind of custom workflow there. So that's kind of how you would set up the basics of the paywall component. Again, there's a lot more that has to be set up on the Google and Apple side of things. 
um, and on the, the IAP uh, dashboard side of things. So, you know, creating your products, inputting the, the Android product ID, inputting the iOS product ID. And uh, those are things that uh, are probably topics for another video. Uh, but hopefully this is enough to kind of get you started. And uh, IAP Hub, Hub has some excellent documentation to kind of help guide you through the process of creating your products and actually getting your subscriptions and your, your purchase of you know, digital in-app uh, purchases uh, going for your app, all right? So the cool thing about IAP Hub is when you actually purchase it, you can see that it's actually using the, the person's uh, store credentials to do the purchasing, right? We're not using Stripe or anything else like that. We're using Google for Android, like you can see here, where we're purchasing a subscription. And you can see on Apple, we're using the person's Apple ID to actually purchase the subscription as well. But then you can also allow your, your users to look at their current subscription as well. And it will show them details about the plan that they're subscribed to, uh, whether or not auto, whether this is an auto-renewing subscription or not, and then even allow them to upgrade, downgrade, or cross-grade, in this case, from a monthly subscription to a yearly subscription. And the, the cool thing about this is that all the pro rating happens automatically. So even though I'm subscribing to a monthly membership, I've already paid that $4 for the monthly membership here in this case. Um, so it's, going to pro, it's not going to start that yearly subscription until the next month at around the same time. All right. So really cool that how it just kind of handles all of that for you automatically if it's, as long as it's set up correctly. Um, and then in the IAP Hub dashboard, you can see here that uh, we've got uh, analytics about you know how much we've made today. Uh, we can look at our total revenue uh, for various time periods. We can look at the various transactions that have actually taken place. Um, and we can look at the number of active subscriptions that are that are uh, happening. All right, I can even go in here and look at the receipts that have happened. So you can see that uh, one person has purchased it on Android. And that there were actually two purchases on iOS. Uh, if I click on these, one of these was for the monthly membership. And the other one was for the yearly membership. So you can see all of this information right here in the IAP Hub dashboard. Again, it takes a little bit of time to set some of this stuff up. Uh, so I'm not going to go through all of it in this video. But at least hopefully this gives you an idea of how to maybe get started setting this up in your app. Uh, make sure to look through the IAP Hub documentation. We also have an, a, kind of an abbreviated help doc uh, in our Adalo help docs that kind of uh, will link out to various documents uh, in the correct order. Uh, and then once you set it on, it's just a matter of turning this from sandbox data to production data, um, and you're pretty much good to go.